Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to look at five must-have tools so you can get started as your own backyard mechanic. Alright, here we go. So five must-have tools for every backyard mechanic. Now, granted, I have a hell of a lot more than five tools in my kit, but these are the five that if you have no tools, are pretty much must-haves to get just started in a baseline of, of some kind of tool in your garage there. So you can do just some odd jobs around the house, you're working on cars or whatever it might be. So let's take a bit of a closer look at them uh, now. First cap off the rank is just your traditional claw hammer. So this is a uh, Stanley 16 ounce. Uh, you've got a strike face here, and then you've got a claw for pulling out nails. This can come in handy if you are just a backyard mechanic too, trying to free up some loose bolts or something that's not meant to be as tight as it should be. This can act as some extra leverage. Uh, you've got to be careful if you're hitting your tools with this because they probably, may in many cases, might void the warranty, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. So. Hammer definitely is uh, one that you should have in your kit. Uh, this is a metal working hammer. It's called a ball peen hammer. So uh, this is for shaping metals. Again, a good one if you're maybe looking to make up some brackets or things like that. You want to hit, hit them in the vise and, and shape them. That's a really good hammer there. Uh, and another one is uh, like a dead blow or soft blow hammer. Um, this is one variety. You can also get rubber mallets and things like that too. Uh, where I would use these hammers. So don't really use one of these that much. Um, yeah. That's not sort of the hammer I, I traditionally use in, in the garage when working on cars, but you could use it. Um, I'll use this a fair bit when I want to hit something I don't really like. Uh, this is the persuading tool, pretty much. So if you want to get something to move that's not moving, this is a pretty good one. Also, if I want to shape brackets or bend a bracket in shape, this is a really good one. Uh, this is probably one of my most used hammers. This hammer I will traditionally use when I'm assembling engines or uh, if I need to, if you just say you need to get a brake rotor off and you, you know, you've got that face that you don't want to hit with a steel on steel, uh, you just give it a couple of light taps. If I uh, want to loosen a flywheel up on, on a car or something like that, uh, you hit them with this one. So this is a really important one if you're going to do brake changes or if you're going to change um, clutch or flywheel on your car, this is a really important hammer. Next we'll take a look at um, tape measures. So. Uh, there you go, that's a Stanley one there, 8 metres. You get these in metric or imperial, uh, depends, or both. Uh, depends on what part of the world you're from, I guess. They definitely come in various types of, of quality, so what I would just say is buy the best you can afford, probably, and that's what I'd say for every tool always, buy the best quality tool you can afford um, to do the job. So this one is your traditional one, I think it's under about $10. It's just got a hardened plastic case in that, so this one's a good tape measure if you're not going to be really rough and ready with it. Uh, it's got a bit of a, a clip there, so if you want to put it on your on your belt or something. What I do use is is this one from Stanley. Uh, it's called the Fat Max. You can actually get these blades to stand out um, a fair bit before they sort of bend like this, and and then obviously you can't measure what you're doing. This one stands out to about a bit over three meters. If I'm under one side of the car and I want to measure a length or a chassis or whatever, this one will actually stand basically erected like that and won't crumble to over three meters so it's really good it's also got really hard to sort of pick up there but you can see a really shiny coating here that protects the tape from when it keeps on sliding back in here and it grabs so it won't wear out which is really really important got your three rivets there which um, you can see that the end moving now that's not a defect that's actually meant to move so you can accurately measure the inside and outside of materials it's got a really really rugged stop uh, and it's got a nice rubber over mold so you can grab it so if your hands are a bit slippery or whatever you can still grab a hold of it uh, it's a nice big 32mm blade too, so it's really easy to read. Um, another type that I really like is uh, this one, which is called the Auto Lock. And I like that because, as you can see, it doesn't retract. Um, if I want to retract it a bit, I just press the button and it comes back. Stanley's pretty synonymous with this kind of tape, uh, so I always buy Stanley ones. Yeah, just buy the best one you can afford, basically. So Next, uh, we'll have a look at some screwdrivers. So screwdrivers, they will, easiest way to buy screwdrivers is buying them in a set. So uh, there's plenty of easy ways to buy them, but um, you can buy singles if you want. The best part about a set is they'll come in a case, so you've got somewhere to return the screwdrivers to. You buy singles, 
they'll get lost. You'll eventually lose one somewhere, buy a nice set, put them back where they're meant to be after, use them, clean them off, and they'll always be there next time. So the two most common types of screwdrivers you've got, of course, is this one, PH2, and then this one, which is a flat, a flat blade. So that means, you know, you'll have these two in various sizes. The pH come in a, a one, two, and a three. Uh, that, that just means how big this cross is, essentially. And the standard style flat blade screwdriver will come in different measurements too, depending on, on the width and thickness of this tip. So you can also get smaller screwdrivers, called like a jewelry set or precision set. Uh, they're good for really, really small jobs as well. So uh, the only other thing to look for screwdrivers is, is the handles. So uh, this is what's called an acetate. So it's just sort of like a plastic. Um, there's also ones uh, with rubber overmold that can be good. Um, I like these acetate ones myself. Uh, they just feel nicer in the hand, I feel. Uh, also, this type of one, you can see it's got a big steel cap and you can see the steel body running all the way through. As in, these ones can actually be used as a bit of a makeshift chisel, so to speak. So if I wanted to get, say, this hammer and something's not moving, I can comfortably belt that on the end and then I'll drive all that force all the way through screwdriver to the end to whatever I want to move and it won't damage it. It's designed to do that. So that's a really good feature you can look for in screwdrivers too if you're buying them because, you know, again, that means you don't have to go and buy it out maybe buy a specialty tool. This tool will actually do uh, a secondary job to uh, not just screwing or fastening a, a screw or whatever you're doing. So, all right, that's about it for screwdrivers. Let's move on to, let's have a look at some of the spanners. Uh, your traditional type of spanner is your ring and open end. So you've got your ring and open end name because that's obviously a ring and that's clearly an open end. So definitely start with these. Again, these come in metric, like that one, or imperial, or AF you might see it as. Uh, you see that's a half inch one there, half inch. Depending on what you're using them for, what cars you're working on, will really depend on the set you can buy. So you can buy sets that come with both, or you can buy just specific metric sets. So, so I have a large metric set, and I have a large AF set, uh, imperial set as well, and that's because a lot of the stuff, I, again, I, I buy from the United States, is actually Imperial. If you work on old 70s muscle cars and things, again, you'll need Imperial. But if you're working on late model cars, say Japanese uh, market cars, or even Australian cars from, you know, from anywhere in the last 30, 40 years, basically, metric will get you by fine. So tools like, like these, where you're putting a lot of force on them um, and you, you can mistreat them. So with, with your hammer, if you buy a cheap hammer, does, does it really matter? Go out and buy another, you know, cheap hammer or whatever and replace it, doesn't matter. But if you buy a cheap spanner set, you know, and you shear off the ring and that can really hold up your job and stop what you're doing. So I always buy the best quality one for those I can buy. So that's normal ring and open end. Next is sort of the stuff that everyone loves. Uh, they're real time savers. Uh, they're a bit pricey, but they're just awesome, which is your ratcheting spanner. So you can see here, they're really, really cool. Not designed to break bolts from when they've been locked around forever. Once that bolt is broken or you need to do it, do it up and you're in a confined space you can see you can just instead of having to take that off and do it and take it off and do it they'll just ratchet back and forth which is fantastic i love them great invention our spanner you've got here which is sort of designed primarily for brake lines uh, so these are obviously got a cutout so you've got your hard line put it in the hard line put it over the nut and do it up if you're going to be doing brake changes pad changes definitely recommend you get a set of these this is just another type, so it's an offset, offset spanner. Both of them are a ring. These are just easy for some bolts that are really tight to get into. I mean, clearance is really tight. So if you've got, say, an exhaust manifold and the stud is here and, and the, the manifold is here, if you add a normal, say, ring open end and it, it sits on here, you can see that you're basically gonna bash your knuckles into that. Whereas this one offsets it and you've got, you know, heaps of clearance here. So they're handy too, but again, not necessary, but definitely handy to get. And I love these ones too. These are, this is basically like a big breaker bar in a, in a ring from spanner that too. So I love using these for hard to reach places that need a lot of torque and that too. So I'll have to not use these on torque converter bolts and clutch bolts and things like that. So these are really handy, but again, not necessary, but it's things you can eventually add to, add to your um, kit over time. So, that's it for spanners. Next, let's look at, uh, last but not least, um, socket set. When it comes to socket sets, you've got three sizes, essentially. You've got your little quarter inch, you've got your three eight, and then you've got your big half inch one. So 
In terms of socket tips also, you've got some small ones or deep ones in like a chrome, chrome style. Or then you've got impact ones in short or, or deep as well. Uh, and these are a softer material, so uh, these are great for when you're using an impact driver, an impact wrench or a power tool, that kind of thing, or an air tool. So um, the amount of impact load and force that these sockets can take is much greater than these because although these are hard, they are also uh, that hard. That hardness means they're also brittle, so they can crack. So you should not be using these in an impact uh, wrench or an air tool or a power tool. Uh, that's what these are designed for. Other important part of a socket set kit when you're buying them is you need extension bits always. Um, there'll always be a bolt that's too far and out of reach. So these, as you can see, click together, and then all of a sudden, instead of it being ratchet that 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 size reach, it's now got this size reach. So they're really important too. And then last but not least is, so it's called universal bit, wobbly bit, whatever you want to bloody call them, but these are designed to get into really tight spots. So if you need to get somewhere that normally a straight would not get to, you can just offset the angle slightly and it will help you get into that spot there and undo the bolts. All right, so that's pretty much it. Five must have tools for every backyard mechanic to get started. Now, that's by no means a complete set. Uh, that's just five just to get you started. Uh, I could go on for hours and hours talking about tools because I love tools and I've got hundreds and hundreds of different type of tools myself. So I'm sure you guys have got suggestions on what should be the sixth to 10th tool that you should buy, or the 11th to 15th tool that you should buy in your toolkits. Throw down some comments on what you recommend, six to 10, and then 11 to 15th in order of, you know, what, what you really need to get started on that. So interested to see what you guys reckon should be in every backyard mechanics toolkit. And uh, yeah, we'll have a bit of a read of that and maybe we'll review some of those in upcoming videos. So thanks for joining us. As always, if you've got any comments, leave them down below, we'll get to them. If you've got suggestions on products you might want to see reviewed or even suggestions for some videos that you might think would be great for this series, let us know. We'll read them. We'll reply to every comment we can. Check it out. We'll be replying as Backyard Mechanics in the comments below. Until next time, see you then.